Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Michael, welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing you 10 useful things that you can do on your iPad. So go and grab your iPad so you can follow along. Let's get started right now. Number one is to measure things on your iPad. So every app has a built-in app called Measure, and you can point your iPad at pretty much anything and get quick dimensions. So this came in handy for me when I was moving furniture out of my room, and I needed to see if the width of everything would fit through my door frame. So the Measure app is a very quick way to get measurements of anything you want. It's not as precise as a tape measure, obviously, but you will find it handy when you need it. Number two is also inside the Measure app. However, it requires an iPad Pro from 20 2020 or later, and it is to get somebody's height. So all you have to do is point your iPad at somebody inside the measure app. Just make sure their feet all the way to their head are in frame. It does work better if they are in front of a blank background and it will give you a pretty accurate measurement of how tall they are. So you can finally settle that debate with your friend as to who is taller. Number three is to use two apps at once. So you can have a split screen of two different applications on your iPad. So if you're open to an application, all you have to do is drag up from the bottom dock and then you can drag any application in your dock to whatever Whatever side you want and just like that you have a split screen. Tip number four expands on this and you can actually use two instances of the same application. So for this example I'll use Safari. So you can have two separate versions of the Safari app open at the same time and you can be in two separate websites. You can also do it with notes if you want. So you can have two separate versions of the notes app open side by side so you can be viewing two notes at the same time. This one is very handy. Number five is to use picture in picture. So if your application is playing a video, a lot of apps do support picture in picture. So I use this all the time with Netflix and YouTube. So if I wanna watch a video on my iPad and keep viewing it, not just hear the audio, you can enable picture in picture inside your settings as you see here. And then as soon as you flick to go to the home screen, your video will keep playing. You can resize the player if you want. And if you tap on the player, you also get some playback controls. So picture in picture on the iPad is very useful, especially with the big screen. So number six is for those iPad users that have an Apple Pencil, and it is called Scribble. So if you want to input text on your iPad and you're currently using the Apple Pencil as your main input method, you don't have to open the keyboard or try to attach a keyboard. You can actually just scribble the letters that you want and the iPad will recognize these characters and it'll turn it into plain text. So Scribble works pretty much everywhere throughout the operating system that there is a text input field and it comes in handy almost every single day for me when I'm using my Apple Pencil. So number seven is to charge your phone using your iPad. So most people don't even know that you can do this. If you have a modern iPad that has a USB-C input, you can take your lightning to USB-C cable, plug it into your iPad, and then you can charge your phone. So this will come in handy if your phone is dying and you have your iPad with you. Uh, it can pretty much act as a portable power bank for your phone. So number eight is to use drag and drop on your iPad. So you can pretty much pick up anything and move it into another application. So you can grab a link inside of notes and you can drag it to messages, for example. You can drag a photo from Safari and put it inside a note or put it inside a message. Pretty much anything that you can move or share on your iPad, you can just pick up with your finger and use drag and drop. It uh, really does work in every aspect of the operating system and most people forget that they can even use it. So I highly recommend experimenting with drag and drop on your iPad as it can make your workflow a lot faster. Number nine is to use Quick Note on your iPad. So all you have to do is drag up from the bottom right corner of your iPad, and just like that, you can start taking a Quick Note. This also works well if you have an Apple Pencil. You can just drag up from the bottom right using the tip of your Apple Pencil, and then you can start scribbling down all your notes. And finally, number 10, it's to take advantage of the iPad exclusive extra large widget. So the iPad supports every widget size that the iPhone does, except recently Apple added the new XL size widget. So if you add this to your home screen and you use the Files app, for example, you can pretty much have all of your files on the home screen of your iPad because the widget is huge. So I'd highly recommend going into the widget gallery on your iPad and checking out which applications you use every day support the extra large widget as it is very, very handy. So right now I want you to go into the comments and tell me what is one thing I shared in this video that you didn't know your iPad could do before you watched. If you found this video interesting or helpful, make sure to drop a like on it. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Michael with IDB and I'll see you in the next video.